Hey there, kiddos. We're going to start section two. Section 2.2. 2.2 of chapter two, section two. Power functions and models. Power functions are like polynomials, but... But not exactly like polynomials. So here's the difference. A polynomial had to have an integer exponent and it could be zero or greater. Uh, with a power function, for one thing, we only have one term here. So it's like kind of like a monomial. Like a monomial one, one polynomial. Term. Yeah. Only one term, but now our requirement is that our exponent has to be a non-zero constant. So, so right, hold on. Okay. Non-zero. Non-zero. Negative 2,037. That's non-zero. Negative one-fifth. That's non-zero. Okay, pi. That's non-zero. Square root of two. Non-zero. Square root of negative one. That's imaginary. Oh! But, so also like five. Five's non-zero. Yeah, okay, but everybody what's, knows what's the non What's the only thing that's not non-zero? Zero? Zero. So everything except for things with a zero for an exponent. So we can have fractions, we can have negatives, we can have positives. You, you're not going to see this situation, so if that freaked you out uh, to see a pi or a square root of two, we're not going to have those exponents. But if you wanted to be really cool, you could just write it down. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Just whatever. So um, the thing is, is that we have it set up like this, this f of x equals k times x to the a, where k and a are non-zero constants, because if k was zero, then this would just be zero. We know zero times anything is... Is zero. Yeah. Okay. And we call a the power, okay? We, we're used to that kind of notation. And then k is the constant of variation, or we could call it the constant of proportion. Those words mean the same thing. But 90% kind of. of the time with this particular textbook, it's going to be constant of variation. Right. They're going to ask you about the constant of variation. And it's just whatever the coefficient is of, of the x to the a. Right. And it's almost always a k, but sometimes it's an n. It just depends on where you're looking and, and the way that the teaching is designed. Right. So we say f of x varies as the eighth power of x, or f of x is proportional to the eighth power of x. And actually, um, we talked about this in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. Like, we discussed the fact that things can vary directly and they can vary indirectly. Okay, and that those are two different things. Also, if you don't, if all you see is the word varies and nothing else, then that, that would be a direct, a direct variation. variation. So if all you see is varies and no other things to indicate, then it varies directly. The other thing you could see with indirectly is you could see proportional. And that means indirectly. What if we talk about these these uh, things down here? Yeah, let's mention okay. them real quick. Okay. So if you look at, say, for example, the circumference of a circle, that's something that you've used probably a minimum of a thousand times in your life. Well, believe it or not, you were working with a power function. Why was it a power function? Well, it's got a constant. And what is that constant? It's really weird looking. That constant is... 2 pi. 2 pi, which, you know, Ms. Stevenson was busy underlining. And th that is a constant because every, everybody knows that 2 is constant. That's right. probably not the issue. But right. pi, pi is constant. It never changes ever, not even once. Right. And so 2 times that never changing number is another never isn't... changing number. Right. Yeah. So our constant of variation is the 2 is pi the part two. of this. So r is our, um, what do you call it? Variable. variable. r is the variable, is variable here. Because that's so, the thing that could change. Right. And what is the, what's the power? It's a 1, it's even though one. we don't write it, how many r's are there? There is an r to the first power. There is an yeah. r to the first power. Okay, so area of a circle. Same setup, a equals pi r squared. And again, pi's are constant of variation because it's the one thing that never changes. The radius does change. It's the one thing that we can pick. And guess what? It's being squared. And any time you have something to the second power, you're being squared. Yeah, so in these first two cases, we would say that this is direct variation. On that, both parts. It, or that they vary directly, or maybe just that they vary. Like, this is the situation that's going on. And the thing you need to remember is that these are all on the same level. We didn't put any fractions in. No division. No division. So these were these vary directly. Uh, now, force of gravity. Check out this one. Uh, we got a fraction in there, which means it's not direct anymore. But it also means we needed to look in a couple of different, maybe different places. Like, you know... Where is my variable? It's that thing with the exponent on it in the denominator there. But and we don't we don't want to. It's not in the denominator in our form up here. So how do we get it out of the denominator? We change the exponent sign. So we, we move it up to the top. And when a when a number changes um, 
from the bottom of a fraction to the top of the fraction, the exponent on that number becomes its opposite. Yes. So in this case, that positive 2 is in the denominator. We can put it in the numerator by making the d to the negative 2. And uh, that's going to be the exact same phrase as the one in red. Uh, which now, though, now lets we us can find see the everything. Power yeah. in the constant variation. The power is going to be negative 2, and the constant is k. And the reason it's k is that's the one thing that's not changing. Right. That's the con They're going to give us, if we had a problem where we were actually trying to do something with this, they'd have to give us enough information for us to be able to find k. Right. So that's, that would be a constant um, based on what the problem is. So this is indirect variation. Boyle's law also strongly resembles the force of gravity, so it also would be indirect. And just like with the force of gravity, we had to investigate what was going on with d squared. We're going to do the same thing with p. We've got to move it from the denominator to the numerator so we have the same shape. And when you do, that exponent of 1 becomes a negative. Right, because it's normally a, a p to the first power on the bottom. But we're moving it to the top, so that's p to negative 1. Which gives us a power of negative 1 and a constant of variation of k. Now, what, let's try this ourselves now. Let's try to set up a formula based on some information. What do you think? Uh, next slide? Yeah, on the next slide, of Sounds course. Sounds good. Okay.